cloud service provider in one hand, CSPs, and the customers with their different data centers and remote sites in the other hand. And guess what? We want to marry them together. And uh, what's going to be the winning ring? It's going to be using Catalyst SD-WAN. Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN is going to link between these two worlds, the CSPs and the different customers, using varieties of technology. Hey, you're going to just do it from a single pane of glass where you can actually not just connect the two together, but also on top of that, get more features and more benefits. So this is what we are about to explore right here today. Without further ado, let's just jump right into it and see what the Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN Cloud Ramp got to offer. And now when it comes to getting your business connected to the cloud service providers, the CSPs, there are lots of questions that could cross your mind, which could play a major role in deciding the best technology that will take that responsibility, responsibility of getting you connected to the cloud, of course. So with that said, I want to be very confident about the technology that I choose. And the confidence is not just going to be built automatically like that. It has to be technically proven based on facts. And here, we are going to discuss those different features and benefits that could play a major role in making that decision to adapt a technology that will get you connected to the cloud. Well, guess what? We're here to talk about Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN. Well, it's not mainly to discuss the Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN, but basically the features that will get you to choose this technology. So let's just imagine that you need to get connected to a specific CSP, cloud service provider. First of all, I need to recap on all those basic benefits that without these benefits, I wouldn't be able to manipulate my connectivity. So first of all, I need to understand that with Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN, we have several planes, namely the data plane represented by routers, which we call them the WAN edge routers, right? And also when it comes to control plane, there is a controller. The controller is named controller, okay? Formerly known as the vSmart, that was previously, but now we call this the controller. And then we have the management plane, the single pane of glass, the software that can give you the ability to configure and troubleshoot everything from that very central location, which is called the manager. It used to be called the vManage, by the way. With that said, this is just the generic features of Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN, but hey, we were not here today to tell you that these are the benefits, no. There is a very crucial benefit that will get you to choose Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN, and that is, guess what? Cloud on RAM for SaaS and Cloud on RAM for multi-cloud. You wanna get connected to those different SaaS applications offered by your service provider, the cloud service provider? Well, guess what? Yeah, Cloud on RAM for SaaS is gonna play that role. You wanna get connected to multiple service providers such as AWS or Microsoft Azure or Google GCP, well, Cloud RAM for multi-cloud is gonna be your friend, but hey, we need more details. Cloud RAM for SaaS, fancy name, I know, but hey, it's not just about the name, it's about the features that will guarantee a smooth delivery of traffic towards the SaaS for it. I'm gonna convince you right here, Cloud RAM for SaaS is gonna get you connected to your favorite cloud SaaS application in the fastest possible way. Single pane of glass from the manager, go there, very minimal configuration, and boom, you're just connected to your, to your SaaS application. Uh -huh. Is it just about getting connected to the SaaS application in the easiest way? No, not just this. On top of that, Cloud and RAM for SaaS from Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN is gonna guarantee the quality of that connectivity and if there is any hinder in the route towards your final SaaS application, automatically it's gonna choose another backup route for you and redirect the traffic to that other path. Automatically, you don't have to do anything, it's just happening. So take this example right here. We have the branch office and on the other side we have a regional hub. And let's just say that whether the regional hub or the branch office, they're trying to reach one of the SaaS applications. Let's just take uh, Office 365 as an example. So technically, what is it gonna do in order to just guarantee that best path selection and continuously monitor the different paths so first things first, send DNS requests to those DNS servers scattered all across the world. And whichever DNS server that is going to give me a reply, 
first with better metrics and SLA? Well, that's going to be my favorite DNI. Who's doing that, by the way? That's your WAN edge router. So let's assume that ISP1 won the battle and now the DNS is, that DNS is actually taking the responsibility of resolving the IP address of that specific URL. Well, what's going to be the next step? Continuous HTTP pings. And this is very unique for SD1. Continuous HTTP pings to measure both ISPs. Maybe one of them degrades. Maybe I've already chosen HTT, um, ISP1 to be my best bet. Uh, how did you choose? It's going to be based on what we call QOE scores, quality of experience score, which is a score from 1 to 10, the higher the better. And let's say that ISP1 gave me a 10 out of 10. Uh, excellent. Awesome. The other ISP gave me an 8, so uh, definitely the router is going to choose the 10. But hey, let's say the traffic is following right now across ISP1 towards that SAS application. But then out of a sudden, the first ISP that was already chosen degrade out of nowhere. So what's going to happen? The HTTP pings are continuous. It finds out that now maybe, for example, 10 has been degraded to 7. So what's better than 7 in my table? Maybe an 8, the second ISP. So guess what? I'm just, according to the packet loss and latency that just happened across ISP 1, I'm going to just neglect it. The router, actually, I'm talking about the router. And then I'm going to start pushing the traffic towards the other ISP automatically. I'm doing nothing. And this is the magic. Another variation of cloud on ramp, multi-cloud. But let me start by asking you a question. Do you remember infrastructure as a service? Pause, a few seconds. You got it right. Yeah, this is when the cloud service provider hosts its own infrastructure, and you're going to be responsible for your own operating system and your own applications on top of that. Well, what does it have to do with cloud and for multi-cloud? It's exactly the same thing, except that we're going to be twisting it a little bit. Let me explain to you that twist, which is going to catch your attention. With cloud and ramp, I'm going to have an example here. As you can see, this is your branch office or your campus site, and you have specific something that represents the HR department, and it belongs to a VRF. Here in SD-WAN, we call this a VPN. It's VPN number 10, as you can see it here. And the business is growing, good news. So what's happening here, you have another branch side with the same subnet and the same VRF, and it's it keeps on growing. One day, your top management decided that, hey, we are not going to invest in the infrastructure anymore. We want to migrate to the cloud or we want to expand in the cloud. So what's going to happen? Well, they decided that they want to move to one of those CSPs, AWS, as an example. We have several. We have Amazon. Uh, we have Microsoft. We have Google. So AWS is an example. Amazon, of course. But hey, what's going to happen technically? You're going to create that subnet in that VRF in the cloud. But the names are going to be slightly different. So you can see here in a region you're going to create a VPC or a host VPC in there. There is that VPN, which is VPN number 10, that built, that hosts the subnet that you're looking for, which is the HR subnet. For redundancy's sake, you're going to have more than one region. And to interconnect your WAN edge routers at the left side, as you can see them, you want to terminate the SD-WAN tunnels to a specific intermediary device that will be automatically created. Oh, wait a second. I was waiting for that word, automatic. Is there anything that I'm going to have to do by myself? Well, the answer is, yeah, you're going to do everything by yourself. But like, guess what? You don't have to worry about studying AWS architecture. So from the manager, from the Cisco SD-WAN manager, single pane of glass, as you remember, you're going to just do everything from there where it's going to initiate that IPsec tunnel, or I should say the SD-1 tunnel with an intermediary device, a transit device, or I should say a pair of VGWs, virtual gateways, that reside in a, another region for the sake of terminating all those SD-1 tunnels. And then moving on to the VPC, the host VPC that you wanted to get connected to, those VGWs are themselves in a transit VPC. So you're merging between the two VPCs, the host VPC on the right side and the transit VPC in the middle. Who's going to take the responsibility of this? This is going to be an intermediary device, another intermediary device, which is called the TGW, the transit gateway. And hey, you don't have to worry about that device because this is AWS's uh, gateway or router. The tunnels are going to be 
IPsec tunnels from the TGW all the way to the VGW. Good news. And that's one example of how sd wan Cloud on RAM for multi-cloud is going to function. Not just this, but if you decided at any moment that you want to expand your network across multiple other cloud, that's where the name multi-cloud comes from, that's also possible from the exact same single pane of glass, the manager. Now, what if the connections that you are used to, such as MPLS, that will get you connected to your favorite CSP, of course, is pretty much expensive? Well, let's just say that you're in a region where the MPLS connection is expensive, or maybe it's not available, or maybe you don't even trust the internet. You just don't feel like, or the business doesn't want to use the internet, and MPLS is really expensive. So what's going to happen? Well, guess what? There is a competitive technical solution, which is called SDCI, Software Defined Cloud Interconnect. What does it do? This offer this option is going to get your branch office wherever you're located it doesn't really matter where you're located it's going to get you connected to your favorite csp as i keep repeating whether this is a SaaS csp which maybe you know you, you want to get connected to office 365 or dropbox or any other application maybe you're trying to get connected to some kind of multi-cloud csp such as aws microsoft azure or GCP. Okay, well, bottom line is the SDCI providers. Oh, yeah, these are specific special providers that will get you connected in a specific way because they have multiple POPs, multiple point of presence, and their routers are located everywhere. You don't even have to worry about, like, about where they're located because they're everywhere. They're going to take your traffic from wherever you're Locate it and get you connected there using those POPs and using different other technologies which are present in their SDCI cloud. Examples of those SDCI providers, we have Megaport and Equinix. Do I have to worry about the connectivity? Again, the answer is thanks to Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN, everything is Single pane of glass, you're going to get connected using the Cisco Manager, which is going to just ease the configuration for you and get you connected regardless of the kind of service provider, regardless of the kind of connection, thanks to SDCI. Last but not least, Cloud Exchange. And with me here today is Robert Lagiano, who's going to help us understand what is Cloud Exchange in a nutshell and the different features and benefits behind it. Mike is yours, Rob. Amazing, Ahmed. Thank you very much. So let's talk a little bit about Cloud Exchange. So Cloud Exchange, everyone also known as Cloud Interconnect, has the purpose of connecting multiple CSP or cloud service providers to our infrastructure. If we have many different services hosted on many different service providers, not a problem. We have Cloud Exchange to the rescue. Cloud Exchange is basically going to allow us to connect our cloud solutions into our premises using the internet in a secure manner. So with Cloud Exchange, we're going to also be able to achieve higher performance, lower latency, and increased security compared to accessing cloud services on the public internet. So those companies that have multiple services, multiple resources hosted on multiple different cloud service providers will greatly benefit from Cloud Exchange. Back to you, Ahmed. Talk a little bit more about the dashboard that we have available in Cloud Exchange. Thank you, Rob. And let's not forget something very important here. In order for the customers to get connected to those different cloud providers, the exchange, the cloud exchange provider is usually going to offer something which is called a customer portal to, you know, to their customers for managing their different cloud connections. If the customer connects to, for example, AWS through the cloud exchange and he or she wants to add another connection to, let's say, Microsoft Azure, for example, they simply configure the new connection through the Cloud Exchange portal. Now, after talking about all these different features, I know that it is time for you to recall what we have gone through. We've talked about the Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN and its different features and benefits. Mainly, we talked about the Cloud on Ramp, and we further 
discuss the SaaS option, which is the Cloud and RAM for software as a service. And also, let's not forget Cloud and RAM for multi cloud. The SDCI was also handled the software defined Cloud Interconnect and Cloud Exchange, of course. With that all being said, <laughs> now you know. Cisco Catalyst SD-WAN is the best choice to get those different customers with their different sites connected to their favorite CSPs, cloud service providers. I hope that this has been informative. I'd like to thank you for viewing.